Hey folks, I'm Pastor Eric Tritton from Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Hudson, Ohio, and this is A Weekly Word. And I'm glad you're with me. Uh, we are spending some time talking about the church, and when I say the church, uh, I mean the capital C church, the big church, the, the, the church that is universal in all times and all places of those who believe in Jesus and, and receive his forgiveness and salvation. Uh, some years ago, I had coffee with the mayor of Hudson, the community in, in which I serve, uh, and uh, in our conversation, he leveled some criticism uh, that's worth considering, uh, especially as we, uh, as we think about how we experience the church on earth, and now you might say I'm talking about a, a small C church, uh, the, the earthly expression of the church and its congregations. Um, he, he says to me, you know, th there are two of every kind of church here in town. And the truth is that uh, th there's more than that uh, for some of the different denominations that are around here. And yet, we confess in the Apostles' Creed that there is one holy Christian or Catholic um, apostolic church. Um, that word Catholic means universal, and that is the original word that was there in the creed. Um, obviously, there are reasons that that has gotten confusing to people. Um, and even before the Reformation, uh, the use of the word Christian was there before there were any divisions uh, in terms of different church bodies. So, if I can look at my community and I can see multiple kinds of Lutherans and multiple kinds of Presbyterians and multiple kinds of Methodists and, and everything else, how, how do we say that there is one holy Christian apostolic church? Well, uh, this is in no small part because that's what Jesus says about the church. Uh, in Ephesians 2, verse 16, it says that Jesus has reconciled all believers. And in that context, he was very much talking about Jews and Gentiles who were, were very, um, very much pitted against each other, uh, but he has reconciled them into one body, the body of Christ. Um, there truly is only one church, and that one church is all people who believe in Jesus, the Son of God and Son of Man, who is our Lord and our God. However, as sinful people, we don't always listen to, obey, or trust our Lord and God. Uh, last week I introduced a, a Lutheran theologian by the name of Bo Yertz. He was a Swedish bishop, and he wrote a book in, the in 1939 called Christ's Church. And in that book, he says this, This is the foundation of the church's unity, the connection with the same Savior in the same mystic fellowship, participating in the same reconciling sacrifice, which is received in one faith, conveyed through one baptism, and comprehended in one bread. This mystic fellowship of all Christ's followers is something far more than any human community of common interests. It emanates from God himself. It is he who does the binding together. When he, in inconceivable love, with inexhaustible gifts of his grace, lowers himself to everyone who believes, making them all into one. So when we think about the church, we should be very clear that, that one of the greatest shames within the earthly, the visible church, is the deep division that we see within her. But how can it be otherwise? If our unity is found in Christ, in his word, and in his sacraments, and we know that sometimes God's word is misunderstood, sometimes parts are wrongly emphasized or de-emphasized in the life of the church, as happens with the sacraments quite regularly. Um, when we know that there are church bodies that deny parts of God's word or even uh, attack the word and the sacraments 
within the visible earthly church. How can there not be division if we cut out the source of our unity by cutting out Jesus and His Word and His gifts? However, as I said earlier, we confess that there is one church. And it's all those who believe in Jesus, the Lord and giver of life, who became one of us, who bore our sin on the cross, and he rose from death in order to give us a new and everlasting life. Our unity, it is in him. And that unity actually surpasses the disunity that we can see with our eyes. It's a, it's a mystical communion. It's a, a mystical unity that we have. It, it, it comes from living in the, the hope of forgiveness of sins and a holiness that comes from Jesus. It's a unity that flows from the hope of the resurrection and the restoration that we will all have on the last day. So it's right for us to long for the unity of all Christians and the unity of the church on earth, but not at the cost of the word and the sacraments. We are not supposed to compromise God's word, whether we're talking about the truth of his law or the glory of his gospel. When there's disagreement on those points, they must be acknowledged. There is division. But here again, we find wisdom from Yurtz. He writes, even where confessional disagreements rise uh, insurmountable walls between Christian brethren, thousands and again thousands of invisible hands, the saints who have gone before us, join before God's throne, lifted in one and the same prayer, the prayer for the reunification of all Christians in one holy Catholic church. We do well to echo that prayer, and to walk in repentance, turning from the, the wisdom of this world for our, our unifying efforts, and turning to Christ, our Savior, the one who rescues us from sin and death, and who deals with the root cause of our division. Thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, if this has been helpful to you, please like it, share it, um, and uh, I'll, I'll be back next week to talk a little bit more about the church. God's blessings. Mm -hmm.